Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today in this video, we will interface the LCD 16x2 using I2C in STM32. I have PCF8574 attached to the back of the LCD, making it easy to use. In case you don't have the one which is attached at the back, you need to connect it to the LCD separately. This is how the pins are arranged in the PCF8574. You need to connect the pin 1 to the pin 1 of the LCD, and pin 16 to that of the LCD. This is how finally the connection will look like. These are the I2C pins, and we will discuss them in a while. After connecting the PCF8574 to the LCD, this is how they are internally connected. RS to P0, RW to P1, and enable to P2. The higher data pins are connected from P4 to P7. Let's start the cube IDE now, and create the new project. I am using STM32 F103 controller. Give the name to the project and click finish. First of all, I am selecting the clock from the external crystal. You have to select serial wire debug or else the SD link will not work after the first flash, and to make it work again, you have to erase it. Select the I2C, and the respective pins will be enabled. Note that pin PB6 is I2C clock pin, and it should be connected to PCF8574 clock pin. As you can see in this picture. The same goes for the data pins. Let's go to the clock setup now. Here I am using the external crystal to generate the clock of 72 MHz. Click save to generate the project. This is the main.c file. Here first we need to include the library files. Copy the i2c lcd.c file in the source folder, and i2c lcd.h file in the include folder. Let's take a look at the i2c lcd.c file. You have to change the i2c handler according to your setup. The default I2C address is defined as 0 cross 4 e this is by default set for PCF8574. Let's take a look at the datasheet of the PCF8574. As mentioned here, the addressing of this completely depends on A0, A1, and A2 pins. By default these pins are high, and therefore the address is 0 cross 4 e I will advise that you take a look at the datasheet of the I2C extender that you are using. These 4 bits are fixed, and the rest 3 are changeable. Along with these 7 bits, the read and write bit must also be sent. So, STM32 uses different addressing pattern than Arduino does. Basically, in STM32 you have to send all 8 bits of the address at once. The 8th bit will be 0 in case of write, and 1 in case of read. LCD send command is used, to send the command to the display. As we are using LCD in 4-bit mode, we have to send our 8-bit command in two halves.
As you can see in the connection that the upper four bits are connected to the PCF, that means, we have to send the higher nibble first, and then the lower one. LCD send data sends the data to the display in the same manner. This is the function to clear the display. Basically, I am just writing blank everywhere on the display. LCD put cursor is used to put the cursor at specific location on the display. The parameter row can either be 0 or 1, and column can vary between 0 to 15. LCD init initializes the display. The pattern of initialization is given in the datasheet, and as I said, we are using it in the 4-bit mode, so that must be initialized. And at last, LCD send string is used to send the entire string to the LCD. You must put the cursor at some specific location before sending the string. Let's start the coding now. First of all, we must include the header file in our project. Initialize the LCD. Send some string to it. Wait for one second. Clear the display. Put the cursor at first row and zero column. Send another string. Remove this clear part. Let's build the code. So no errors, that's good. Start the debugging. This is our debugging perspective. Let's run the project now. As you can see, both the strings are bring printed at their respective locations. The second one prints after one second, as written in the program. Let's make it little more interesting. I am defining the variables row and column first. I am going to print all the ASCII characters from 20 to 128. The column is going to increment after each print. This is not necessary, as the column will increment automatically anyway, but we need this for the next step, and that's why I am writing this. If column is more than 15, the row will increment and column becomes zero. If the row is more than 1, row becomes 0. And I am giving some delay between each printing.
It is printing all right but not as I expected. Let's make some changes in the code. I am going to add some delay here, and clear this data from the screen. And I want it to print from 0 to 128. As you can see now, it's much better. To display any number on the LCD, you need to change it to the respective ASCII character first. You can do that by either using S print F, or break the number down in ones, tens and hundreds form, and then display individually by adding 48 to the numbers. This is it guys. I hope you understood the video. You can download the code from the link in the description. The library files will be in the source and include folders. Leave comments in case of any doubts. But before doing that, make sure that you have checked the datasheet of the I2C extender properly, because the I2C addresses change for other variants of the PCF family. Do not use the I2C address that you found from Arduino. Have a nice day. Keep watching.